to open your Bibles with me to the book of Habakkuk. You know, the Bible says um, all the promises. Say all the promises. All the promises in him, in Jesus, are yea and amen unto the glory of God by us. We become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world through the promises of God. Everything you have as a believer, as a child of God, you've got because it's a promise you received. The promise of salvation, the promise of healing, the promise of deliverance, the promise of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the gift of speaking in tongues, the power gifts, revelation gifts, utterance gifts, visitations, it's all promises. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all there. There's many of the old covenant promises that are still in operation today. We're no longer underneath the book of Leviticus, uh, the Old Testament laws. I understand that. Christ is the Passover lamb. We don't have to celebrate none of the holy days, feast days, new moon days, or Sabbath days. Jesus fulfilled them all. But we can study them and we can learn from them. But we're not going to come into bondage to them. You hear what I'm telling you? We have found our freedom, our healing, our victory. It's all in Jesus. He is the year of Jubilee. He is all that we need. Yes, I believe in the Father and the Holy Ghost, but I'm saying that the Father sent the Son to set us free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And he sent his word and he healed them and he delivered from, from all their destructions. Holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This is a God-inspired, God-breathed, God-indwelt, God-empowered truth. In the book it's Logos, in your heart it's Rhema. What is rhema? Rhema is faith. It's when the word of God is quickened to your heart and it becomes more real to you than your circumstances, than your physical body, than things around you, than people's opinions or societies. God's word becomes more real to you. When Jesus walked on the water, he walked on the word. When Peter jumped out of the boat, he walked on the water, he walked on the word. Uh, we stand upon the truth of God's word. We build our foundation upon nothing but truth. The truth of God's word. And uh, everything that we are taught and told, we, we're like the Bereans. We go into the Bible and we make sure that's exactly what God said because men can be deceived. We can be led astray. We can be teaching people things that are not true. And if it's not true, then it opens the door for the devil to have a heyday. So the prophet of God in the book of Habakkuk, he wrote in chapter 2, verse 1. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what God will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. All scripture is given by inspiration. God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. You'll find out if you walk with God for very long, you're going to get a lot more reproof, a lot more correction a lot more chastisement with the truth, then you're going to get edification. Amen. Yes, you will be edified, but it says in Hebrews chapter 12 that if you're not chastised, you're none of his and you're illegitimate. God will chastise you. And what is God trying to do? Trying to bring you in line with his will, his word, his truth, his revelation, his, what he wants for you. See, God has a wonderful plan for your life. And we know there's an enemy, and I don't exalt him, but we don't wrestle flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom we may devour, and whom we are not ignorant of his devices. There is an enemy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Whatever happens in your life does not mean it's the will of God for your life. There's an enemy out there trying. Now I realize all things work together for good to them that love God, that are called according to his purpose or his will, his word. For in other words, it'll work out if you know the will of God, the word of God, if you take a hold of the truth of God. But if you don't take a hold of the word of God, what the enemy meant for evil will bring destruction in your life. 
And the Bible says, give no place to the devil. And we have to admit that a lot of times I'm writing a finishing a book by tonight or tomorrow. It's called, please stop blaming God. Please stop blaming God for all the negative stuff in your life. For he's the father of lights in whom there's no verb and it's not a shadow of turning. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth any man, but every man is tempted when he is of his own lust and enticed. And when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin finish, it bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes from the Father of lights. Listen, that sickness is not a gift from God. That tragedy is not a gift from God. That affliction is not a gift from God. Right. Yes, you can turn it around if you know the truth, right. but many don't. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, and because thou hast rejected knowledge, I have rejected you. You understand I'm just quoting Bible this morning. You can't get any deeper than the truth. <laughs> if, you, if you're deeper than the truth, I don't, I'll pray for you, but I really, I'm going to stay away from you. I'm going to stay away from me because I, I don't want to be contaminated, corrupted by your opinion, your theology, your doctrines, if it's not the word of God in context. Amen. Write the vision, he says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Write the vision, or you might say, write down the will of God. Write down what God's trying to do. Write it down. Write down the vision and make it plain. Write it down, make it plain. Notice, write it upon tables that they may run that read it. Notice, it didn't say sit on the premises. It didn't say rest. It didn't say mosey along. It said run. Isn't that what Paul said? He said, I press toward the mark. Run the good race. Paul said, I have kept the faith. Run, run. Now's not the time to go backwards. Now's not the time to sit. Now's not the time to just kind of mosey along. Now's the time to run. Read the vision. Read the book. See what it says. And go for it. Press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling. The high calling. It's a high calling. It's a high calling Woo! <laughs> of God in Christ Jesus. Run for it. Your life is like an hourglass. The sand is running through it. You're not going to reclaim tomorrow, the week before, the month before, the year before. That's why Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forth unto those things that are before. I press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now he's not writing that to the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Thank God for the fivefold ministry gifts. I understand that, but he's talking to the everyday believer. I press. There's there's some uh, uh, there's some work involved in this. There's some elbow grease involved in this by faith. Faith without works is dead, being alone. It's not works, it's works that are produced by faith. It says, I know people like this scripture, and I like it too. For we are saved by grace through faith, and not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works. God created me for good works. And it says grace inside of me that performs it. <laughs> it's not Mike Yeager. I can't boast about anything I've ever accomplished or done or will do. It's Jesus inside of me, the hope of glory whom we preach. Warning every man and instructing every man in all wisdom. Woo! That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Perfect maturity. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I, I became a man, I put away childish things. We've got to put away childish things. 
What childish things? Anything that is contrary to the will, the word, the personality, the nature of God, put it away. Crucify it. Mortify it. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that lives within me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. He says to Galatians, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not believe the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you. Were you saved by the law? No. You are saved by faith in Christ. Amen. Trusting in him alone. We are those who have no confidence in the flesh, Paul said. If any other man thinks he has confidence in the flesh, I am more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching law blameless, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. He said, but all those things, I count them but dung. Nothing but dung, nothing but manure. I say bird poop. <laughs> that I may apprehend that for which God had been apprehended. God apprehended you. You didn't apprehend him. Oh, you responded, that's for sure. But he said, unless the Father draws you, you cannot come. You came because he was knocking on your door so loud you couldn't ignore him any longer. <laughs> And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon the tables that they may run that readeth it. Notice you got to read it. You got to read it. You got to get the instruction. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Yes. You got to read it. If you don't read it, you ain't going to run. You ain't going to know what to do. And there's no reason why there should be one person in the body of Christ today that is confused because we got the New Testament. And the foundation is the teachings of Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Take a look at Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He was the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Look at Jesus. You see the Father. I know what the will of God is for Mike Yeager. I know what the will of God is for you. I'm not talking about the color clothes you wear or the color car you drive. I'm not talking about how big a house you live in. All of that stuff is just, it, it don't mean a thing. We brought nothing into this world. It's certain we can take nothing with us. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Now, we've got a job to do. We've got a vision to run. We've got a purpose. We've got a plan. We've got a mission. God's called us to reach the world for him. It's not called us to be happy and fat and sassy. Though I've been all three. God's called us to reach, to touch to heal, to deliver in his mighty name. Amen. That's what we're called to do. And it says, run with it, read it, run with it for the vision. For the vision is that for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. It shall speak. I'm telling you, every promise, every blessing, every provision in the word of God will come to pass if you'll just root yourselves into it and not give up. Prayer supplication with thanksgiving. There's been times when it didn't look like God had answered my prayers or fulfilled his word. But I, through, the, I, through the years, I learned just to stand. Now, there's times I was a pacifist. I told you when Donnie and I and, and, and Howard and some of us put this building up back in 1986, and we had the heavy crane just one day. And the rest of it, we had to manhandle it. And in the midst of it, I, I got a hernia and bulged on me and... I, I, I knew healing was mine. I repented for being stupid. How many know that you need to do that almost every day? <laughs> I got a book back there called I Need God because it's not bad confession. People, that's a bad confession. No, I'm stupid without Jesus. He's my wisdom. Yes, yes, yes. See, he's my everything. He's my strength. He's my, uh, 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 he's everything. All that I ever need or wanted is found in Jesus. And I wrote another book called Stupid Is As Stupid Does. I got, I'm doing another book. It's called Dumb and Dumber in the Church. <laughs> and uh, Stupid Is, Stupid Does, and Dumb and Dumber in the Church is not just about me, but it's about you too. <laughs> and, and I don't name names. Uh, but you might read about yourself in that book. And I mean, no, we all do stupid things. But thank God for the mercy. Yes. Yes. The mercy of the Lord endureth forever. And so I had this hernia. I thought it was three years. Kathy said it was two. And it was getting worse and worse and worse. And one day I woke up and it was coming out so far I knew it could get strangled. And 
I said, enough's enough. And I said in my heart, I said to the Lord, I said, okay, God, what can I do to activate my faith? I mean, you got to activate your faith. Your faith is dormant inside of you. How many know you can have a, a dormant brain? People have a dormant brain. Just kind of, it's there, don't do nothing. You, you can, you can how, how many know you can have common sense and not use it? You ever done it? No, no, you can have lots of money in the bank and still starve to death. You can have faith, but you got to activate it. And so I said to myself, okay, I know that I know that I know that I'm healed. No offense, I've known that since I was a 19-year-old kid, been saved for about a month and had a revelation of the stripes on Christ's back, and I knew that I knew that I knew, and I knew. I didn't say at that time I'll never use the doctor again, but it was so alive in me, I said, well, I do have a doctor. I've got the great physician. His name is Jesus. Amen. Now, what if I do use the natural world? Well, let's just grow, go on. Let's just grow up to where we don't need them anymore. Isn't that all right? Can't you develop your faith enough to where you don't need to trust in the arm of the flesh? Amen. Really, don't we? Isn't, isn't God bigger and better and less expensive than the medical world? Amen. Huh? So I had that revelation. By his stripes ye were. If you were, you was. If you was, you am. And if you am, I is. And this worked for me for broken bones and cancer and hernias and you name it, burns. And well, I had to take a hold. So I got up and I said, okay, how can I activate my faith? I said, well, it's kind of hard to do anything with that hanging out there like that. And so I, I took my hand and I very aggressively shoved it up in there. In Jesus' name. Didn't you have a spirit of fear? I don't have a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I shoved it up in. In about 20 minutes, it came back out. I shoved it up again. Every time I shoved it up in, I said, in the name of Jesus. I'm not exaggerating. Liars go to hell. I said, in the name of Jesus. I shoved it up. So I walked all day like that. All day shoving it up. And the next day and the next day, for a whole week, for a week and a half, two weeks, I kept shoving it up. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Now, I want to tell you to shove your hernia up. It's got to come up out of your heart. First of all, it wasn't my hernia in the first place. <laughs> Went to bed one night, got up the next morning, and it was gone, and it's never come back. It's never come back. Story after story like that. Why? Because God can't lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Take a hold of that. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Have he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken it? Shall it not make it good? That ought to get you excited because that means every promise, every blessing, every provision in this book is yours. It is impossible for God to lie. Now you can call God a liar. I ain't calling God a liar. There's no weapon formed against me that can prosper. I, took, I didn't even know it. it. When Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means come to harm you. Amen. I've got a book back there 60 times. My wife and my family and I should have been dead 60 times. And many of those times it looked like we were goners. But you know what? God came through every single time. And that little lady kept stabbing me in the face with a knife, trying to kill me. That knife couldn't penetrate me. When I stood in two blazing bonfires, gasoline fires, people saw me in it, and them flames couldn't kindle upon me. It's not because I'm so spiritual. It's just because I, the word of God, it's real. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What are you trying to do, Pastor Mike? I'm trying to stir you up to get you to understand there's another level that you can go. That you and I have not yet arrived. That we have barely brushed the tip of the iceberg of what God has for us. That God has for you. It's yours if you want it. If you would just take a hold of it. If you just begin to believe it. You know, I tell you all the time, you were conceived in your mother's womb and you were a single cell, uh, uh, just a single cell uh, uh, creation. And, and now as a full grown adult mature, well, maybe I shouldn't say mature, adult person, you have over 37 trillion 
cells in your body. From one cell to 37 trillion. 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 So look what God did with that little seed. Turned you into 37 trillion. So how much more is there available for us? Paul, who wrote, what, most of the New Testament? He said, I have not yet apprehended. But I'm not done. Tell somebody, I'm not done yet. Smith Wigglesworth. At 48 years old, he was born again. He loved God. Plumber, never had a miracle in his life. Never had a miracle. Oh, he was a soul winner. But when he heard about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and uh, he went down to that place, three days he argued with them people who were getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. He was telling them, I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. Because they were taught when they got born again, they got the Holy Ghost. You got the Spirit of Christ in you is what you got. I just ran into somebody the other day and just told me the same thing. Pastor Mike, uh, uh, wasn't it you, Hannah, that you thought that you had the Holy Ghost and you were not yet baptized in the Holy Ghost? Uh, A pastor, okay. So there's a lot of pastors out there who right now think they have the Holy Ghost and they don't have the Holy Ghost. But then there's a lot of people who have the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost don't have them. That makes the difference. It's not you just having the Holy Ghost. Does the Holy Ghost have you? Yeah. You got to let the Holy Ghost have you. Right. Let him behind the steering wheel. Get out from behind it. You're a terrible driver. Yeah. We're behind you and we watch you. You're all over the place, man. Let the Holy Ghost get behind that steering wheel. Yeah. Amen. And some of you, especially if you get drunk in the Holy Ghost today, you're going to have to let somebody else drive you home. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just have some. Just have some. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm kind of lost here. I'm just a little bit, <laughs> a little bit tipsy myself here. For the vision is yet for an important time, but the end it shall speak and it shall not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely come to come. It will come to pass. Say, it will come to pass. Now, I just want to give you some scriptures. So vitally important, you know, first John. John, John uh, had such deep revelation and understanding of who God is that if you read first, second, and third John, you could get a little bit lost and, and misunderstand some issues he's dealing with. But he, he, he knew that God was love. Exactly what his love looked like. We've been preaching on that. What does love look like? Well, it looks just like Jesus, doesn't it? And it's not this what we call sloppy, agape, greasy love. Uh, love doesn't, you know, lo- love doesn't just accept you the way you are. They teach that. Love says repent. That's what love says. Even natural love, uh, when you get married, even natural love doesn't say, I'll accept you exactly the way you are. Right. Natural love. When, 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 when God rescued my soul, he didn't rescue me. Now, when I cried out to Christ and, and repented, I was born again. And like the prodigal son heading home from the pig pen, and if I would have died, I'd have been okay. But God, God, God is holy. Amen. God is love. God is a consuming fire, and God is holy. Yes, and God says, without holiness, no man will see God. Now, you can believe all the lying preachers, or you can believe God. I'm going to believe God. Amen. I don't know if I want to say lying. I'm going to say deceived. Deceived. He's deceived them. And they're thinking they're okay. And it's nothing unusual because I was a Catholic my whole life. I thought I was saved. How many of you thought you were saved before you were saved? Any of you? Yeah, but think about it now. You were convinced you were saved before you were saved. That's why it don't work saying, are you saved? I mean, Mormons will tell you yes. Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you yes. Muslims will tell you yes. They're not saved if you don't have Christ in your heart. And you're not loving him, serving him, following him. You're not saved. Jesus said, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. People have no conditions. Yes, there is. Repent. Believe. Believe, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him, whosoever should believe. What does believing mean? Well, look at the books of James. It says, the devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, vain man, that faith without works is dead, being alone. Don't shut me down all because I'm preaching truth. It's truth. It's there. 
Can I challenge you with scriptures, Pastor Mike? Yeah, as long as they're in context. I love the whole word of God. I've had people say, quote a scripture to me. I say, oh, I love it. Praise God. They'll quote, they'll quote a part of James or a part of Ephesians or a part of Philippians. I said, oh, I love that. They said, you do? I said, yeah, I memorized that back 20 years ago. Let, let me just, let's go through the whole book of Philippians. I'm not bragging. It says, I love the word of God. It changed me. It transformed me. It's still changing me. It's still transforming me. It's still healing me. It's still delivering me. It's still setting me free from the darkness, the lies, the immorality, the perversion of this world. Setting me free. <laughs> Listen, 1 John 2, 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Notice, he's lied to himself. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. What? Deceive yourself. He that says, I know God, and does not keep the commandments. Oh, there ain't no commandments. Oh, yes, there are. I've got a book back there on nothing but the commandments of Jesus. Last Sunday morning I preached where Jesus said in, in, in Matthew, he's in 1828. What did he say? He said, go and teach all men every word to observe all things I have commanded you. And he gave that to his 11 apostles, didn't he? The foundation, he said, you all go teach people to observe what I have commanded you. What does he command us to do? He commands us to take up our cross, to deny ourselves, to love him. First commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, strength, and being. You know, why do you think Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. It is a two-edged sword. It is the goodness and the severity of God. If, it, if I'm just preaching the severity of God, I'm preaching another gospel. If I preach nothing but the goodness of God, I'm preaching another gospel. And Paul said, if we or an angel preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be damned. It's not my words. They're his words. There's, and and they're, they're powerful words because they can change you if you believe it. But you got to believe it. And, 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 and that's why Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord. And matter of fact, what did he say? And, and he says, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not much more in my absence, as you have always obeyed. Now, I've been a pastor since 1977 and I've never known that kind of a creature. They always obeyed everything God said. But he says to these believers, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. Notice it didn't say work out your wife's salvation. <sighs> or your husband's salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. With what? Fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Oh, today pulpits are full, full of deceptions. That's why you better cling to that word. You better get the word inside of you. And if I teach something contrary to the word of God and it's out of context, then you need to spit that out. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. What's wrong? The truth's not in you. If we're believing a lie, the truth. All of these preachers, like I said, Smith Wigglesworth, he really thought he had the Holy Ghost. But he finally fell to his knees in the pastor's kitchen. He said, I'm not leaving till I get baptized in the Holy Ghost. He got filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. He, he wired his wife, Polly, Polly. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Polly, uh, you know, she was a Salvation Army preacher, a little firehouse. And, and, and they started dating when she was about 16, 17 years old. And she taught him how to read and write because uh, he, he didn't know how to. And when he was in third grade, he had to drop out to go to work in the factory to keep his family sustained with food and clothing. And uh, so Polly wired back, said, Smitty, You've always had the Holy Ghost. He said, no, I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, I did. Notice what a lie would do. It'll keep you up from where God wants you to be. So when he got home, she said, well, you're going to prove whether or not you got what you call the Holy Ghost. Because, see, he couldn't preach. He was like his mother. And, 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 and he, 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 that's how he talked. It would take him forever to get ten words out, like his mother. And so... 
She had over and over tried to get him to preach. He couldn't preach. So he said, I'll do it. So he got up in the pulpit, opened his mouth, and here comes, because all that word he had in him now, all those years, all he had been reading was the word of God. No newspapers, uh, no novels, nothing but the word of God. That's all he hid in his heart. And all of a sudden, it all became alive by the Holy Ghost. Say, praise God for the Holy Ghost. Well, Pastor, I call him the Holy Spirit. You call him what you want. He's the Holy Ghost. And so all of a sudden, he opened his mouth and he began to preach. And as he was preaching, the congregation began to fall under the power of God in that little Salvation Army church. And all of a sudden, his wife's in the back screaming, that's not my Smitty. That's not my Smitty. That's not my Smitty. And she got baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. And that church right away became a Holy Ghost Pentecostal church. But all those years, he was kept out. From the outside of that power because he believed a lie. Now, you don't have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to get to heaven. you got to be born again. But see, the enemy is doing everything he can to keep us out of the truth. Because from that moment on, Smitty began to be used of God in mighty ways. That's the only reason I wrote about him. He's not my hero. I love him because he never said he was an apostle. A prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or a teacher. Before I began to move in my apostolic calling, I was already, as a 19-year-old kid, seeing devils coming out, people being healed, people being delivered. Because them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Tell somebody he's talking about me. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that, listen, he that saith he abideth in him. I'm abiding in Christ. Ought himself also so to walk even as Jesus walked. If you're telling us I'm abiding in Christ. I'm really dwelling in Christ. I'm really, you know, I'm eating his flesh. I'm drinking his blood. He's the true vine. I'm a branch and I'm abiding in him. His word is abiding in me. He said, if that's true, then you ought to be living and walking and talking and moving just like Jesus. See, that that's that's the vision, right? The vision. Here is God's plan. To 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 really just, uh, uh, you know, to just really uh, get the devil all upset to make you just like him. God wants you to be so much like him that when you wake up in the morning and get out of bed, the devil wets his pants again. <laughs> He's so upset. Oh, no, here they come again. Oh, every time they open their mouth, all that comes out is the word of God, the name of Jesus, the authority, the truth. That's all that comes out of them. <laughs> That's what God's plan is for your life. God isn't concerned. Yes, God loves you. He knows every hair in your head. He'll give you a nice car to drive or a beat up car. You know, Paul said, I've learned I can be full and I can be hungry. I can uh, suffer need and I, I can be. He said, I can do all things. For in other words, it doesn't matter. Your contentment, your fulfillment is not found in what you possess. It's in whom you possess. <laughs> It's in whom possesses you. Pastor, do you believe people can be demon possessed? Yeah, but I also believe that by people in the body of Christ, they can be Jesus possessed. (laughs) You want to be Jesus possessed? Possessed by the Holy Ghost. Possessed by the divine nature, character, personality, and life of Jesus. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. Zoe life. Now people who don't know what Zoe life is, they'll, be, they'll just kind of like, you know, sit like a lump on a log. Cause, but but if, once you've tasted it, woo, once you've tasted it, you can't, nothing else satisfies. Nothing else fulfills. Once you get the new wine, you don't want the old wine. <laughs> Once you've experienced walking in the authority of Christ, you don't care about the authority of this world. Listen, before I got born again, I was just all wrapped up in 
drugs, alcohol, immorality, perversion, pornography, rock music, hunting, fishing, uh, uh, sports, you name it. It just had me by the throat. But that day, February 19th, 18th, February 18th, 1975, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, when I went to slip my wrist in the fear of God and I knew I was going to hell, J.R., I belonged in hell. I knew it. No one ever preached to me. I dropped the knife out of my Jesus. I'm telling you, niece, I cried out to Jesus. I'm telling you, I got up off the floor. To that moment, I was, I was suicidal. Uh, not just suicidal. Before that, I had tried to take some people out with me, driving my car on the other side of the road. Me and a guy were driving down the road. I remember uh, driving my 69 Javelin, 18 years old, and I had a 22 pistol. We put a bullet in there, and I flipped it, and I put it to my head and pulled the trigger, playing Russian roulette, going down the road. <laughs> Flip it again, pull it again. I was possessed by the devil. But when I got up off my knees, I was now possessed with Jesus. I mean, I was possessed by him. Why? Because I gave him my heart, my mind, my soul, not even knowing the scripture says, give me thy heart, old man. When I married Kathy, it was not a 50-50 deal or a 10-90% deal. It was all or nothing. It's been that way for 45, going 45 years, and I got all of her, and she got all of me. <laughs> uh, pray for her. <laughs> I mean, it was all. I tell you, God wants all of you. Or he don't want none of you. He wants all of you. And what happens when you give all, all, when the early church was all, they gave all they had to Jesus. You know, that's why people get stuck on, you know, I've never taught tithing. Why don't you teach tithing, Pastor Mike? Because, see, my whole concept when I got born again was all that I have is yours. And that's where I live. All I have. Really, Pastor Mike, yeah, he'll speak to me many times. Many times through the years when we didn't have enough money even to keep the place going. He'd say, empty your checking account and send it to so and so. During the COVID time, we, we, you, 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 you talked to the leadership of this church. We gave away over $70,000. And it's not because we had 11. He, he just would send it in and God said, send it out. Send it in and send it out. Why? Because give and it shall be given. Yes. That's, right. That's the spirit of God. So God so loved he gave. We give, we give, we give. Now, if you're not giving at least 10%, and, 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 and I don't even tell people where to give. You, you be led of the Holy Ghost. There's missionaries out there that God wants you to support. There's people out there. I'm, I'm not after your money. What God's after is after your heart. He's got your heart. He's got it all. Let me tell you, when my wife got my heart, she got it all. I mean, she got it all. I mean, she's got access, brother, to everything we have. <laughs> it's hers, ain't it, baby doll? And when she wants it, she gets it, praise the Lord. <laughs> but you can think about this. I have limited sources because I have limited faith. God is unlimited. But if we know him, we ought to walk even as he walked, shouldn't we? Uh, John 14, 12. He verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go unto my Father in heaven. Uh, John 15, 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. Why? As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides me and I him the same bring forth much fruit. He said, if a man does not abide in me, he's talking to his disciples who he no longer calls servants, he calls them friends because they do what? He tells them to do. Yes. You know, that was the attitude of the early church. Lord, tell us what to do. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? He was inside ministering his brother and his mother. Now, think about this now. Do you know it says that the family of Jesus did not believe on him? Not until after the resurrection. So there'll be people, maybe at 
this moment they won't believe, but that doesn't mean God's done with them. James became one of the apostles after the resurrection of Jesus. But he, he, he said, he said uh, uh, they said, your, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside. He, he said, well, hold on. Who's my mother, my brothers, my sisters? But th- listen, they that do the will of my Father in heaven. Now that will set you free from what we call uh, once saved, always saved. Who are the mothers, the brothers, and the sisters of Jesus? They who do the will of the Father. Now, to some people, that might sound like legalism, but it's not to those who love Christ. Oh, you got flesh. How many know you got flesh? If you don't think the person next to you has flesh, just pinch them real hard and you're going to see. No, no, don't. I was just teasing. You're going to find out they got flesh. But we don't let our flesh control us. We don't let our flesh see by faith. They, they, about three weeks ago, I'm sleeping in bed, and God, many times, he'll speak to me almost audibly. I got a book back there, How God Speaks 20 Ways. And there's sometimes I've heard his audible voice. Now, whether or not you know this, and I'm not talking about this, did you know that the Bible says that thunder is the audible voice of God? That's what it says. It says when there's thundering, that is literally the audible voice of God. God is saying, I'm here. I'm here. Have you, you know, I, ever since I read those scriptures, I love it. The other day we had a thunderstorm and the whole house was shaking. I said, keep on talking, God. I'm listening. But I heard the audible voice of God in my heart and he said this. Above all, taking this shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Oh, above all, taking this shield of faith. Put your shield of faith up there, people. Put your shield of faith up there. You'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Woo, they sound like a trumpet, didn't it? <laughs> all the fiery darts of it. Woo. Oh. Mm. Mm. Philippians, you know this 313. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forth unto those things such as before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. The word perfect there means mature. Have you come to the place of maturity yet to where you are living your life just pressing into God? Pastor Mike, if all I did was press into God, I I wouldn't have time to do this or do that. Oh, you're wrong. It'd make you more effective. It'd make you a better husband, a better daddy, a better worker. It'd make you better at everything you do. Whatever you put your hand to would prosper and have good success. Because whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, not unto man. Knowing of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Now, I wrote a book back there called Once Upon a Motorcycle. Now, before I got born again and filled the Holy Ghost, you would not want to sit as a passenger on my motorcycle. But when I was out there doing missionary work with the motorcycle, the Holy Ghost would come upon me and I would make evil Knievel jealous. I'm telling you, the power of God would hit me. I told you I was in the Philippines among the communists, and Danny Montez, who's still a good friend of mine, he wanted me to take him home one night, you know, to his wife. He'd never been away from her, and we had done a crusade on an island where they told us if we came, they would kill us, and God said, go take it, and we still got our church to this day over 20 years later. So I get on this raining out one night. I get on this busted up old 150, 250, 175, Kawasaki, whatever it was, and the shifter would fall off. It would just fall off. But the Holy Ghost was on me. How many know that makes a difference when the Holy Ghost has got a hold of you? Woo, man, then you can, when the Holy Ghost has got a hold of you, you're moving in the Spirit, you're in another world. And Danny says to me, Mike, will you take me home? And the Spirit of God said, take him home. And I felt like David when he needed water from the well. And his two men went down, fought the enemy, and brought him back. A cup of water, he poured it out before the Lord. And I heard the Lord say, take him home. See, they had it in their head. I was this amazing motorcycle driver, and they were wrong. (laughs) Terrible driver. I'm just a terrible driver in the natural. But when the Holy Ghost is on me, 
I'll tell you what the Holy, I got on that motorcycle and shifted it. And he said, Mike, we can't slow up now because the communists, they know we're coming. They'll hear us coming and they'll stretch a piano wire across and attach it to the trees. It'll cut us in half. Mike, you can't slow up. I didn't have a spirit of fear. I said, no problem, Danny. So I got on that and the Holy Ghost took over. I'm going, I can barely see where I'm going. I'm just going as fast as that motorcycle can go. Next thing I know, I see something real big and dark in front of me. Now, I didn't realize I said this. Danny was with us about five years ago, came here and stopped by. My wife and I went out with his wife, uh, Cecil, I believe her name is. And, and uh, he said, uh, Mike, watch out. And he said, I said this to him, hold on, Danny, we're going right through it. Now, who in their right mind, going as fast as a motorcycle can, on a dark, rainy night where I can't see where I'm going, would say there's something big in front of us. Hang on, Danny, I'm going right through it. Man, it turned out to be a big, I have no idea, it was a big, big pile of construction material like gravel or dirt or something, or ass, I don't know what, it was big. And I hit that puppy and I went right up just like a rocket. I am not exaggerating. Now, Danny... He, he's operating fear. He stuck his head underneath my arm. He's hanging on a deal life. Listen, I still remember this day. I am flying through the air, and it's like I'm in heaven. Many, many times my life was in danger when the, when, the, when the gang members tried to kill me in Chicago or the Yupik Indians tried to kill me or the communists tried to kill me. or, 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 or. Every time God's presence, remember the kingdom of God is what? righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I'm flying through the air, and it's just like I'm in heaven. I'm suspended. I'm telling you what, it's like I'm hung in the, in the heavens. I'm just going along. I'm telling you what, it felt like forever, and all of a sudden my bike came down just as slick as you can imagine and hit the road and never, never fought or just kept on going. Well, the problem is when I hit the road, the, uh, the, the, the shifter fell off. So now I'm, I'm in top gear, shift six gear. And I said, oh, Danny says, we need that. You need the shifter, Mike. And, and the headlight didn't work very good. It was just dim and bright, dim and bright. And it was a piece of junk, you know. So he, we got to go back and get it. So we go, I mean, we go way back and could, looked and looked. He said, okay, Mike, we're just stuck. We're going to have to get out of here because... Man, they, they, the communists, and he was really operating in fear because I knew guys they, that I used to preach with, they would kill him and stick their head in post in the town square. And it was no game. No, no white people went where I went. They would not go there because the communists would love to kick their hands on an American. So anyway, but it was the spirit of God. I didn't go there because I chose to go there. Listen, you got to hear from God's voice. If he's not sending you, you better not go. You know, so anyway, so I said, okay, Danny, so we take off down and we go about, I'm telling you, two, three hundred feet. And I see something glittering in the road and there is our shifter. I have no idea how far we flew. So we get the shifter on. I'm headed back down the road. And here we forgot that the main bridge over and it's in my book, the name of the river, a 300 foot wide river that flows into the Chinese Sea where the bridge was gone because they were putting a new bridge in and all they had was pilings with about an 18 inch planks with a rope handguard that people very gingerly walk across that 300 foot river uh, because if they fell in you'd never find them again. So we get to the river and Danny says to me, Mike, what are we going to do? Now I'm moving in the Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. I mean, I would, admit, I would not have even, so I said, hang on, Danny. So I revved the engine, dropped it down into the gear, went down through the muddy uh, mess in order to get to the plank, got up and hit the plank, and I rolled that plank 300 feet. Planks, wobbling, wet, slimy, greasy, all the way across that river by the power of God. Danny was so moved by the Holy Ghost, he named his next son Michael. And then he named his next daughter Kathleen. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand clap. But see, that's in the Holy Ghost. Verily, verily, I send you, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have, Jesus told his disciples, you have no love, you have no life in you. Zoe life. Say Zoe life. Zoe. Well, what does Zoe life look like? Here's a little bit of Zoe life. <laughs> Just a little bit. 
No, honestly, that's Zoe life. He ain't faking it. I've known Howard for 40 some years. That's Zoe life. Right there. You want some of that, Rwanda? <laughs> have some Zoe life. Ladies, have some Zoe. Now, some people are more sponges than other people. Some people can absorb Zoe life. Stop hitting my leg, Howard. Zoe life. Zoe life. Life as God has it. Divine life. Holy Ghost life. Powerful life. You're on fire, Howard. You just turned red. That's the, po- that's the fire of God. How about you? Wait, you want some of that Zoe life? <laughs> you, want some, you take that home to your wife. You take some of that Zoe life home to your wife. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. Amen. He says, and as many as you as have seen his revelation. That's what he said. He said, I've, I've not yet apprehended. He said, but as many as you have, have matured to this place of what? Completely surrendering your mind, your heart, your life. Now, I'm not saying I'm totally there. I, I, I need to be there. I tap into that place at times. Oh, when I tap into that complete, total surrender to God, to the Word, to the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you what, devil, you better watch out, because wherever I go, it's like Jesus himself. Paul said, when I came to you, you received me not as a man, but as Christ Jesus himself. The good news, it's available to all of us. What does it say in Philippians chapter 2? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, this attitude, this thought, this desire, let it be in you. Remember, here is the vision. Let God transform you into his likeness and his image. That's why they tried to kill the early church. They looked just like Jesus. They couldn't handle it. They couldn't, you know why we don't have, all that live righteously will be persecuted. The reason why people don't try to persecute us in our world today is because they don't see enough of Jesus in us. Now, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about Jesus, his life, his nature, his character, his personality. And, and then people are all, I want the anointing. I want the power. I want the authority. What, what does it say? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Go ahead, have some, sis. You need some of that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all, y'all just, I'll just step out of the camera here for a moment. Y'all just have some here. Y'all just, well, I don't believe this. I don't care what you believe. You just have some of that joy. Woo! It's good, ain't it? It's good joy. <laughs> Woo! It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's not dead religion. It's living. It's alive. It's vibrant. It's fire. Jeremiah said, it's fire shot up in my bones. (laughs) Go ahead, D. You need some. It's been a long week. Go ahead, D. You just have some right there. You and Charles, you just go ahead and drink up. It's Mother's Day, D. No one on that camera. Okay, D. You go ahead. You go ahead, D. Whoa, yes, 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 yes. Don't tell me no. <laughs> you just go ahead. You just have some of that wonderful Zoe life. Woo, pour it in. See, old wineskins, they can't take new wine. New wineskins. New wineskins, Hannah. Have some, Hannah. Have some. Woo. Go ahead. Just, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. Don't worry about religious people. Whoa. Zoe life. Zoe life. Zoe. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. You're kicking away there. Sister, are you swimming in the river? Zoe life. Pastor, you got to stop making them do it. I'm not making them do a thing. It's Zoe life. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. You have no Zoe in you. You say, well, I don't have none of that. You're not eating and drinking. You got to eat and drink. <laughs> you got to eat and have some, Lisa. It's getting on you. It's getting on you. 
Have some of that. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind who was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the cross, unto death, even the cross. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow for things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Zoe life. Zoe life. Zoe life. Have some, have some more Zoe life.